Hello and welcome back to another YAW tutorial. So in the first 10 tutorials we covered some basic topics on the business process management system YAWL and now in the following tutorials starting from today we will cover some more advanced features. And the feature we will discuss today are multiple instance tasks. So you have to know that if we have a workflow specification we call every little step a task and every workflow specification can be instantiated into cases. So we have case one, case two and so on and so forth. And in general for an ordinary task which is called atomic task we have for each activation of the task in the workflow in the case we have the work item. And normally there's only one work item for each activation or one instance as we call it. But in multiple instance tasks we can have any number of instances for each activation of the multiple instance task. So we will show multiple instance tasks using an example of a hiring process where we first collect a list of suitable candidates and then we have a multiple instance tasks for carrying out the interviews. And so we have one instance or one work item per candidate to do the interview and we can distribute these work items to our personal specialists. And after all the interviews have been conducted, we can then review the results. As usual, you can find the supplementary material in the link below and we will start right now. Okay, we start here with the your control panel already open and the YAWL engine is running. And we're going to click on the YAWL editor symbol here and it opens up with a specification tutorial 11.YAWL that you can find in the supplementary material. This specification has two tasks for the time being, edit candidate list and check candidate list. And we are going to insert the multiple instance tasks in between the two. So we just delete the arc between the two tasks here. And now we are going to insert a multiple instance task. And it is in the palette here, the second symbol from the left, multiple instance atomic task. So we click that and we insert it here and then we connect it to the other tasks. And so now we have that and we are going to call this interview candidates. So we create a new decomposition, call this interview candidates and there we are. Before we edit the task we will have a look at the data types because we need a list of candidates first and the data types are specified here under properties of the specification and we have two defined types here and you can see them here but in order to see them a little more clearly, we will open the file candidates.xsd and look at the XSD specification here. So essentially, we have two complex types here. The first one is called candidate type and the second one is called candidates type. The first one is a sequence of a name, a phone number and a comment. And the second one is a sequence of candidate. And candidate, as you can see here, is of the candidate type and it has a max occurs unbounded. So we can have any number of candidates in the candidates type and that's exactly the thing we need for the multiple instance task. Now let's construct the multiple instance task. 
we select the multiple instance task in the editor and go to data variables and in our net variables we have already a variable called candidates which is of the candidates type and we have already given it an initial value which looks like this candidate name phone number comment currently they are all empty so what we will do is we will drag and drop this candidates variable into the task variables or the decomposition variables of interview candidates and now we see a red warning here one variable must be marked as multiple instance and the rightmost symbol here is mark as multiple instance so we have to press this and now this variable name as you have seen changes from candidates to candidates underscore item and you can also see that it is now of the candidate type and no more of the candidates type so this is exactly what we want underneath the editor has created a splitter and a joining query the splitter query is for $s in candidates star return and so on and so forth so this splitter query essentially splits up the candidates into single candidate items and if we are familiar with xpath and xquery we can write our own queries here but for the time being we will just leave it as it is and the joining query is in the output mapping so for $j in interview candidates candidate return $j so again the editor has created this joining query here and we are not going to touch this for the time being and essentially we are done for our multiple instance task of course we could have other variables here that are not marked as multiple instance but for the time being this is enough we click OK and then this specification is complete so now we will save it and upload it to the YAWL engine and launch a new case okay now let's try it out we are currently logged in here as a user that is administrator at the same time and we have started interview candidates with the case ID 36 so if we go to the admin queue we can see edit candidate list our first task here and we can start that directly to our user go to the work queue look at the started queue and edit the candidate list and so we can have a candidate and now we can create any number of candidates with the plus sign here so I will create another candidate and I complete this let's look at the admin queues now we have one instance here interview candidates and we can offer that and start it and I conduct the interview and then I complete it we go to the admin queue we get another work item here we can start this conduct the interview and now 
we have one item work listed here, check candidate list. and we check the list with all the interview results. That's all. So you've seen that multiple instance tasks are a good way of distributing work to a larger number of people. And in YAWL there are several allocation strategies for doing this and this will be the topic of another video. What we haven't covered today for multiple instance tasks are thresholds, and also dynamic instance creation. If you are interested in these topics, please leave a link below. See you next time.